All right. So we're going to go through the first problem on the 2021 AP Physics 1 FRQ. Um, this is a, a released exam uh, from this year's administration. So hopefully this will be a, a good kind of indicator for the style of questions that might be coming up on the next two um, administration dates. Now, just to be uh, aware, this is a seven point question. So this is a shorter FRQ. Um, it's supposed to take 13 minutes. A vast majority of that time is going to be spent doing part A. And uh, as soon as we get through part A, B and C become much, much simpler, um, especially the explanation for part B. So just be uh, aware of that. So this first, this first part um, is looking at for you to derive an expression for the distance x zero. So we've got this distance here that we're looking for. We're given this height here, and we're given this angle theta here. So basically, we know this bicycle is going to come down this ramp. It's going to launch off, and this angle it's given, but that's kind of the same as this angle, opposite interior angles there. So we've got that that angle. I believe that's the geometric rule that, that tells you that that's also theta. Um, that'll come in handy when we're looking at the components of the velocity. So the nice thing is that you're given this height, and that's a value you're able to use in these uh, equations. So that's that's one component that we can uh, utilize here. Now, just a general tip, just a general tip for solving these derivation style problems. Um, this one is particularly challenging in my opinion, um, just because there's multiple substitutions that we need to do with multiple different types of equations. Let's look at the first relationship right off the bat, right? We need to figure out how fast this, this guy's going to be going off the, off the ramp. So I'm going to use energy. I'm going to say, well, I know that I start with gravitational potential, right? He's just coasting down, so he's not adding any work or anything like that. So that gravitational energy that he has at this point is going to equal the kinetic energy that he has at that point. Now, when that cyclist gets to that point, he's launched off with his velocity v. This is one relationship I'm aware of now. This is one relationship I'm aware of. I also need to kind of figure out these two components because this x component requires me to know the x velocity and the time that that cyclist is in the air. Right, so already I've identified two kind of relationships that are going to be relevant to my uh, derivation here. So let's solve for V first and just have that in our back pocket here. So I know that just going through my algebraic manipulations, my velocity is equal to the square root of 2GH. Now, why do I need to figure out what my velocity is in terms of these values? Well, You'll notice I'm not allowed to use velocity. I don't, I don't get to use V in my derivation here. I can only use the height, the angle, and the mass. We'll see here that the mass is actually not a, a necessary value. So this is one of those ones that they throw in there as a little trick, um, but you're actually not gonna utilize that, that variable in your expression. So I've got my velocity, but I know that I need to break it down into components. So I know that Vx, is equal to V cosine theta, and Vy is equal to V sine theta. So already, I'm able to kind of figure out Vx in terms of V here. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to plug this in for V in that situation. So I know that Vx is now square root of 2gh0 cosine theta. So I've got this half of the equation taken care of. Now I need to solve for this other half of the equation, this time half. I'm not allowed to use t, it doesn't give me t, so I've got to figure something else out. Um, there's kind of a logical way to do this and there's an, an equation way to do this. I like to just go through the logical way since you're starting and ending in the same place. Really, I can just find out how long it's gonna to take to get to that point and then multiply that by two because the time that it takes to go up is equal to the time it takes to go down. 
you can do that in equation form as well. Um, and let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to do this off to the side here just to make this a little bit uh, more clear. I know that my final velocity equals my initial velocity plus my acceleration times time. And I'm going to do this all in the y dimension, all in the y dimension. Well, my initial velocity is the y, right? It's my y component. So I'm going to call that root 2g h naught sine theta plus g times t equals my final velocity. Now, if I was just saying, okay, let's go to the very top here, my final velocity would be zero because this is only talking about the y component right now. But I can also just say, well, if I'm talking about going all the way down here, then my final velocity is negative root 2gh0 sine theta because it's symmetrical, so my positive velocity is equal to the negative velocity on the other side in the y direction again. So if I solve for t, if I solve for t, um, we're going to get that t equals, and again, I'll subtract this from this side, so that becomes negative 2 root 2gh0 sine theta, because I'm essentially just having two of these, right, over g. Now, this negative sign's a little bit tricky right now. Technically, g is a negative acceleration, so it should be a negative value. So that's going to get rid of my negative signs. I could essentially just say it's negative 1 and negative 1 on the bottom. So that becomes a positive function because, of course, your time needs to be positive. Uh, this cyclist is not jumping into a wormhole or anything like that. So um, now I've got this function for t. So I'm going to multiply this by t. This is not a simple function, but it's going to simplify to something that's less daunting. Let's multiply our square root functions together, and that'll give us 2gh naught when we just multiply those two together. So I'm going to eliminate those, and I'm going to say, okay, let's shrink that down a little bit. Oops, that's not an option here. So by multiplying those square root functions together, we end up getting cosine theta times 2 times 2gh naught times sine theta. There's a g there. So overall, x0 equals 2 cosine theta sine theta h0. So x0 is a function of those components here. Get this and just move it around a little bit. I did not intend for it to be kind of up there floating. All right, so there's that, there's that value. That is our x value here. Oops. That's fine, we got this all sorted out. Now here's an easier problem, right? Because that took some time. Here's an easier version. We've got the vertical distance between the top of the first ramp and the launch point was 2h0 instead of h0. This is a linear function for the most part, or rather I should say these are directly related, x0 and h0. So because they're directly related, any change to this one will have the same resulting change in that value. So for that reason, since they jumped over six cars originally, we're jumping over six cars originally, now we're gonna jump over 12 cars, 12 cars, because h0 and x0 are directly proportional. There's no exponential or square root function or anything like that. 
Now the vertical component of the stunt cyclist's velocity here. Um, when we're looking at this, we want to make sure that we're looking at what the instructions tell us to do um, as well. So the positive direction is upward. So we know they start with a positive vertical component. We know that the overall displacement from this should be zero. So they need to end with a negative version of the same velocity. And we know that it should be a linear function straight line with a constant acceleration of negative g. We also are asked to clearly indicate the initial and final vertical components in terms of h0, theta0, and m0. So again, we remember m0 didn't matter for that because when we look at what our vertical component was, we found that it was v sine theta, where v is the square root of 2g h0. So I'm just going to say this is square root of 2g h0 sine theta. And this value is negative square root of 2g h0 sine theta. That's this point right here and this point right here. Um, make sure that you are remembering to indicate those values when you can, all right? or where you are intended to. So it says, make sure you indicate the initial and final vertical velocity components. And then again, you wanna make sure that you are clearly showing that this area and this area are equal because the um, displacement in the Y direction is zero to overall. It ends, starts and ends in the same place, which is why you have the positive and negative version of those values there. Hope this helps for the first AP FRQ problem. Um, we'll regroup and do some of the other ones as well.